welcome back. Um, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you my top five favorite places visited in the last year. Now, travel is one of those things that I can go on and on about because I really enjoy and love doing it. And um, I believe that it makes you a well-rounded person. Not to say that if you don't travel, you're not going to be a well-rounded person. No, don't get me wrong. But I just think you get to experience um, different places, different cultures, different people and you just have a different outlook on life in general because um, living in one place I guess you get you know and you get to get out of your comfort zone as well because staying in one place and not having a chance to experience anything apart from what you know I just feel some people are a little bit um, that makes certain people a bit um, what is the word I'm looking for um, what is the word? Gosh, what is the word I'm looking for? <sighs> Anyways, when I remember the word, <laughs> I'll insert it somewhere here. Right, I just remember the word. The word I was looking for is ignorance. Because you get people who are really, you know, who think that you got bears walking around Russia or you've got like uh, lions and <laughs> elephants walking around Africa, you know, so yeah, that was the word ignorant. Anyways, right, let's get back to the video. So first up, um, as I'll be going down my list, I will be inserting pictures here somewhere um, of the places. So um, number one on my list is Barcelona, Spain. Now, um, I had been to Madrid previously um, and I discovered it's a total different vibe to Barcelona because Barcelona, as it's on You've got the city, you've got the beach, it's got a very, um, can I say bohemian? Well, to me, anyways, I had more of like a bohemian sort of feel to it. The people are very, it's more culturally, um, how can I say this? Um, vibrant, <laughs> that's the word. It's more culturally vibrant, I think, um, because of that. Uh, you've got those little, um, cobalt streets, you know, uh, small little streets, cafes, and I really enjoyed it. I was there during some time, and of course, it's a very touristy, it's a very touristy area, so if you do want to go exploring, I think it's best to go when it's um, not peak season, as you get to see a lot of things, because um, I wanted to go and see the, uh, the cathedral, um, it's Grand Emilia. Didn't get a chance to, because the queues were horrendous. <laughs> so. Best time I think if you want to go and really explore Barcelona, that will be around when it's not peak season. Alright, next up will be Dubai. Um, what can I say about Dubai? <laughs> Dubai is the Monte Carlo or the Monaco of the Middle East. And I don't even think that it compares because the amount of luxury that you get to experience or see in Dubai, I don't think you can see it anywhere else in the world. Uh, it's the first time I visited Dubai, um, I just felt like I was in one of those science fiction movies with the tall skyscrapers, the crazy roads, the amount of supercars, it was, it was incredible, it was really overwhelming to me. And um, it's something that, you know, once in your life to see, I think it's interesting. Um, very a lot of expats, um, so you don't really feel that you are in an, in an Arab country, and that's one of the things that I enjoy um, experiencing in Dubai. Because everywhere you go, you can you know people do speak English. Because like I said, I think 80% of the population are expats. Um, beautiful hotels, um, exquisite service, because you know everything there is so to speak five star. So. Um, but it's very expensive. I noticed that um, if you want to do your luxury shopping, Dubai is the place to do so because the prices I found are on the high end, uh, considering the fact that it is a duty free country. Well, things there are duty free, but the prices on luxury are very kind of crazy. Like, you know, I think if you want to buy luxury, you're probably still the best place to do so. So, yeah. Um, Apart from that, swimming, beaches, everything's there. Um, but it's hot. If you go August, September, and you're not a fan of heat, then I would not recommend going <laughs> during that season because it's extremely hot and you're just gonna die. <laughs> um, but the water is 
as warm as if you take a bath. Like that is one thing that I really enjoyed. Um, so yeah, um, Dubai is one of those places that it's a must to see. I think I've been there like four times since. But I mean, if you're a first-time tourist, um, I really do recommend Mr. Dubai because I don't think any you know because nowadays you can't get to travel to a lot of Arab, to a lot of Arab countries or the Middle East in general. So Dubai is still one of those places that if you really do want to see luxury or, or just experience the Arab culture and it's, you know, go for a desert tourist of some, of some sort, that is the best place to um, do it. All right, next up will be Bangkok. Now, um, Bangkok is one of those places that most people have associations with the Hangover movie. Um, and so did I. <laughs> um, it's one of those crazy melting parts of the city in my opinion um, a lot of things you will you see that you don't really get to see in other places um, I, you know this is the red light district I wanted to compare it to one in Amsterdam but it's nothing like it um, it's they've got different um, parts of town where they do have those um, so-called red light districts um, the one I went through was like literally everything was in red lights, um, red pink neon lights and you had gogo bars on each side of the street and you had the pretty girls standing outside waiting to welcome their customers. Um, it was an experience, um, very interesting. But overall I think Bangkok is one of those places that if you do want to go visit um, it's really to have fun. Um, did a bit of sightseeing as well. Um, um, one of the things I enjoyed it did a, um, a riverboat cruise. Um, that was something that was really nice. I did on a riverboat cruise, which is very, uh, very relaxing after the craziness. Because during the daytime, it's super busy, uh, a lot of traffic, and where we were, I was getting around was using the tuk-tuks. Um, they did have a metro, but never got because you know when you're traveling, uh, like at least by foot or you take a taxi because you do want to see what's going on around you and um, taking the underground is one of those things that I try to avoid to do. But yeah, overall, um, people are very friendly. Um, it's very cheap there as well. So um, right, number four on my list is going to be Singapore and Malaysia. The reason I put them together is because they're very similar in, in their cultures and the influences they do have in the culture. That is the Indian, the Chinese. Um, and I think a little Arab that goes from Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, because they had like little, um, in town, um, little areas dedicated to like Chinatown, they had, they had little India, I think little Arabia as well was there, if I'm not mistaken. Should have been because yeah, I do remember seeing something. Um, there was a mosque, I remember seeing a mosque. Um, beautiful as well. Well, beautiful. Um, huge cities, a very friendly people. Um, Malaysia is very cheap, I must say. Um, when it came to food, um, you can eat as much as you want, eat your heart out because very tasty. Uh, if you like going and trying local meals, very, very cheap. Um, same goes for Singapore. Um, so Singapore is on the high side, um, is a bit pricey. Um, a lot of expats as well there. Um, I don't know if I mentioned about greenery in Singapore because there's greenery in every corner you go, just parks, parks, parks. Um, beautiful place. Um, yeah. I wouldn't mind going back um, to experience Malaysia. Um, Singapore was more like, um, I don't know, there's something about Malaysia to me that kind of drew me more to want to go back and visit Malaysia rather than Singapore. Right, last on my list is going to be in Maldives. Now, this is one of those places, um, paradise on earth, should I call it? Because beautiful, um, beautiful turquoise waters, white sandy beaches. It's one of those places that I could only dream about wanting to visit it, and I'm so grateful that I did get a chance to do so. Um, um, I stayed in a water villa, um, so it was an even, an even, um, exciting, more exciting experience I should say because um, I remember in the evening you go, you know, just 
you know, just sit outside and you just hear the waves. The waves, you know. Um, it's just, I, I can't, I'm just thinking about it right now. I'd rather go, I want to go back. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for a place to total relax um, and get away from everything else, everything, um, I think Maldives is one of those places that if you do have an opportunity to visit, it's a must to visit um, because it's just breathtaking. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. Anyways, um, <laughs> that is all for my five favorite places visited. Um, I hope you all enjoyed this video. As I said, I will be putting pictures and recommendations just for those of you just you know, who might want to go and check out those places. So if you liked my video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do press the subscribe button. And um, I really do hope to see you in my next one. Bye.